Hello everyone, let's talk today about the design process. The design process is a very interesting point. So as architects, you are, you are designing a building, a structure. So let's say you want to design this house. So here you are right here and you are commissioned and they tell you, I want you to design this house. So you barely get the project or the idea and so, and this is the final project. So in order to get here, there is this road that's gonna lead you here. And I know I drew it very linear, but in reality, this road looks a little bit like this. It's a pretty long, turny, curvy road in order to get here. So everything right here in the middle, in order to get from when you began to actually being built, that is the design process. So it's a part, it's a very integral, uh, takes a big part of the role of architecture. And it's a very, very fun part, but it could be a little scary at times. So, uh, so that's why I wanted to talk to you about some tools and techniques for generating ideas. So when you're barely beginning, you're, you're barely to tell you, want you to design this house for me or design this, uh, what are some tools that can help you into uh, this process to be able to come up with the design? So let's, let's look into that. So first of all, what is the design process? The four things I want to talk to you about. Number one, exploration. This simply means the design process is, uh, is a series of ideas that are yet to be discovered. Are, are certain things that are yet to be um, discovered by you through creativity, through exploring different things, to uh, trying different things, through going to the site, and so on. So uh, I want you to think, you know, uh, of this design process, a very exploratory process, uh, and you'll get to discover a lot of things of your project. So that's why every project is so interesting, because you get to explore and find new things. The second thing that I do want to mention is that it's iterative or generative. This means that it's building upon itself. So sometimes you'll draw something in the first few weeks and I'll have a lot of great things, great ideas will come out and I'll have a lot of bad ideas. So you sort of start learning from your success and your failures. And so basically, again, it's not a straight path. It's sort of this idea of trying things, going, this work doesn't go, let me go back to this, let me go this. And so it's just simply building upon and upon and upon of, this, of different things. So what are you gonna need for this? You're gonna need skills and techniques combined with the creative impulse. This means that yes, you'll learn about colors and you'll learn about materials, you'll learn about structure, you'll learn about uh, solar, wind, temperature, all of these things. You'll learn how to understand architecture technically, but you also need to combine all of those skills with creativity. So if you just create a building that functions, it could be nice, but uh, using creativity, merging all of that is when it, it's what's going to create it into an amazing structure. The last thing is I've already mentioned is that it's non-linear and, and synthetic. It just means that it's overlapping with uh, a lot of different ideas that you have. It's all building into something. So everything that you draw is just building towards your final design. So how do we start? Okay, so you've given this task, go build a house, go design a house, go design a library. The first thing that I want you to think is speculative drawing. So speculative, this is to engage in thought or reflection. That's what speculative means, it's just to engage into an idea. You don't really uh, have a, a certainty. So drawing or when you design, I want you to take out of your mind the, the idea that you have a certainty which, that you, you know what you're going to draw because you don't. In design, we just simply guess or dream or hope about the future. And that can never really be precisely discovered before. It's through the, de the design process that we discover that. So it's always really open-ended. Drawing becomes open-ended and formal and personal. And, it's, it, and these drawings usually never get out into the world unless you're really famous, those do get out. Um, but it, this, is a, 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 this uh, speculative drawing time is a very important thing. So here we see some drawings done by Oliver Alto, a great architect. And again, in the left one, 
you just see how it basically looks a lot like scribbles. You kind of get lost in what he's doing. This one starts to get a bit more um, shaped, but still you see how he's just like, okay, I have something here that I wanted to cover and I wanted to be focusing here. This is going to be my main thing and I wanted to create some sort of uh, radio grid upon it and so on. And here, you know, this is a probably a sheet of paper that he did and I want you to think about it as this one big sheet and in this one sheet he did uh, a lot of the same things over and over again. We see that this is kind of the final idea that he has but he kind of started doing it over here and it kind of began here and it kind of see it here and we see it here in an elevation and so we start to see this shape over and over again so you can just imagine him at a restaurant or at home just doodling on this sheet of paper with the same idea over and over again and again it is not a definitive thing is he's exploring different ideas it's just playing around with different ideas Finally, we get to a concise floor plan and we see that this sort of finger type is like looks like a hand thing did make it through, right? But this thing that is over here is not exactly the same, but we do see that a lot of the sort of the shape that he had sort of comes through here. So again, there's a lot of the things that, that did make it to the final thing that were done at probably at early stages that eventually were refined and refined. This is the final uh, uh, design of what, we, what he was sketching. So this is in Finland, in Finland, Finlandia Hall in 1971. And so ho hopefully you're like, you're like, wow, this looks really amazing. Uh, and you, you probably never guessed that it's it, this, uh, these, these scribbles and sketches were eventually going to turn into something amazing like this. So that's part of the design process. So the design process uh, has to do with sketching, has to do with drawing, getting your ideas down. So, and so that part of getting your ideas down is called the creative process. So speculative drawing, so drawing, just free flow drawing, is part of the creative process. So when you, you're starting to draw something, let's say again, you wanna build a house and they tell you, I wanna build a prairie house style or a farmhouse style, you can easily go to a lot of websites and see a lot of farm style houses. So that's an easy way to start drawing, so, which is what we call precedence. Precedence just simply means, you know, look at, at, at people, at drawings of, uh, previously, uh, of work done previously that is very close to what you're trying to do. The problem with this is that sometimes we see some things that just becomes part of our mind then now we're like, I have to draw it exactly like that because I really liked it in the, in the way he did it. And so remember, this is an exploratory time. So what does that mean? This means that you can look at all these images and then you start exploring them. I like this from this, I like this from this, and I'm going to synthesize and I'm going to create my own version of this through things that apply to my thing. So don't look at things and become and allow it to stop you but see this as a starting point for it to um, as you evolve your own design evolve from what you see not just get stuck from what you see that's a very important thing so this creative thing uh, process I'm going to be focusing on the idea of thinking on paper so drawing on paper so I know you're probably thinking number one I'm not a good drawer so, uh, so I know you, and if you're thinking this, uh, what's it called? Don't, this part is not a, the, the focus is not how good of a drawer you are. There'll be a lot of skills and hopefully through this class and other classes, you'll develop your skills. But the main thing that I want you to understand is that thinking on paper just means that you can, you, you should be able to put your ideas down on paper. Uh, constantly. So even if you're not the greatest uh, artist at the beginning, just put your papers down. I remember being in architecture school and always carrying a journal with me, an uh, a sketchbook, and everywhere I was, an idea would come and I would just sort of draw it or something that I like, I would draw it. I remember traveling through Europe with my, with my journal every single place that I went and I had uh, all these different um, drawings all over in my sketchbook. 
And, and so I want you to start thinking of that. And if you can do that, have a journal, that'd be a really, really good point. So now let me, uh, let's talk about nine different tips that will help you start your drawing. So the number one thing is that when you see a sheet of paper, you're gonna be scared, like, what am I supposed to draw, right? You're gonna be like, I have to design a house, but how, like, what? Like, you just sort of get scared and blank out. The first thing I'm gonna tell you is start small. What that means is don't take the whole sheet of paper. You know, if you're building a house, designing a house, don't go like this and say, this is my floor plan. No, get your sheet of paper and start thinking of different designs. Okay, my house is like this, uh, okay. Want it? This is okay. Let me think of the side. The side is rectangular, so I think I want it to be in the back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now that I got my side, what is going on? There's trees in the back. Okay. There's also a huge tree in the front. Mm. Okay. So what? What is the main street? Is going like this. Okay. So it has to be. This has to be the front view. So that you just simply creating a lot of different things, a lot of different designs start flowing from the having uh, small uh, designs. Later on, you'll, you'll, let's say you really like this, you can blow it up and make it into a whole sheet, right? But start small, just different ideas, throwing it out, throwing it out, throwing it out, all different ideas. Some will be great, some will, you, you won't ever really come back to, but it's as part of the same process. So here we see this, uh, an example is, it's, uh, they start with the line. And so the book says, you start with the line and it can turn into a lot of different things. It can be part of the structure, it can be part of the design. So we see that line here, here, and here. I remember when I was in middle school, I had an assignment that they would tell us to, we were sitting in a circle and we got a sheet of paper and, I just, and they told us to do some scribbles. And then they told us, okay, you're gonna draw some scribbles and then you're gonna pass that paper to the person sitting next to you and the other person will give it to me. And then now they said, get, look at that image and look at the scribbles and what can you see? What can you draw? Fill in the blanks. So in this scribbles that I just made, I don't know, sort of see like a snake, right? And so you start seeing this sort of snake and maybe this is uh, another snake that's just, sort of sleeping here or something so I don't know and then uh, this could be a pond water and then the snake was trying to get out of the water I don't know but basically you get the idea of how I really enjoyed that 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 assignment for class because it was like something that it wasn't there and it was just scribbles and we had to create something out of it so it's, that's the same thing of start small just to free flow and then and then start playing with the, the lines that come out of your design. Maybe some lines will influence you to do things. Uh, there's this, again, if you're faced with this dilemma, what do I draw? This is a good quote to remember it's from Alice in Wonderland. And so Alice has to take a decision and she's like, what road do I take? And they answer, well, what are you, where are you going? And she's like, I really don't know. And so they answer, then it doesn't really matter. If you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. And so that's a big, a, a good quote to remember for architecture. You're like, where are you going? I don't really know. Well then just draw lines and things. Uh, and because if you don't really know, then any road will eventually get you there. So just start drawing. The, the second thing is very similar to what I was just saying, this idea of fluency and to drawing a lot. So in order, to, in order to, uh, to get good at this, you have to do it a lot of times. And so fluency, hopefully, you know, you think of fluency as something liquid. It's not very rigid. You know, water it just flows. It just, you know, it just, if you drop a cup of water, just you see how it flows and takes the shape of anything. So that's how your drawing should be, very fluid, not very like, oh, it has to be a perfect 90 degree angle. No, just let it be fluid and drawing a lot. And the second thing, uh, as you draw a lot, you're gonna be very, very efficient. And efficient simply means, uh, will be, in regards to this, it's gonna mean that you're gonna start avoiding or ignoring some things that are not that important. So if we go back to Albert Alto's drawing, we see that here in the back, he didn't draw any of the restrooms. 
but here he draws all these like green rooms back rooms it's part of the plan but he didn't really draw it here because he was like i know i need restrooms but i'm not really going to focus on that right now and and a lot of things that he later on draws it's not really and not really a, a big focus in the initial sketching so as you start sketching you'll learn uh, what are some things that are important to keep what are some things that you just really don't need layering has to do with the fact that you're synthesizing so you have to think of uh, a floor plan but you have to think of section and elevation and you have to think of different views you have to think of the site and so all of these things uh, are speaking to each other and so by putting uh, um, uh, this transparent paper you can draw on top of uh, the things that you've already been drawing and also this will help you uh, refine some edges this, let's say in the floor plan you did it really bad in the first one then you're like okay let me do it a bit cleaner and then you're like but this this part I'm gonna remove it but this part I'm gonna make it better and then you get another tracing paper and then so on you just sort of start building so it'll help you fix the areas that you like and remove things that you don't like so tracing paper will become your best friend the other thing is called recombining which is very very similar Recombining is this idea of you're giving us, this is called a tangram. So this is a puzzle uh, uh, done by, many people believe by uh, the Asian culture many years ago. And so it's basically they give you a, a shape that you need, to, and then they give you all these different shapes that they need to fit inside. And so you have to organize it or, or, or place them in the correct order or in a specific order. But if you're given the shapes, you can just simply move them around and, and create new shapes. Uh, so recombining is maybe you started drawing the stairs and entrance and different things, all in different papers. And now you're starting to sort of bring it all together, seeing how it all works together. Uh, here we go back to the tangram again, the same idea of different shapes. And you're just playing around with the same shapes that you have and manipulating them and now seeing how it works. So maybe you'll have a, lo a kitchen here, right? And you have a lobby and you have a bedroom. And so maybe you can see how the kitchen and the bedroom look together next to each other. But then you're like, no, you know what? What about the living room and the kitchen, you know? So you start playing with the with things that you already have and mixing and matching. Here we see an example of circles, triangles, curves, rectangles, and eventually all organized in a certain manner to create your building being flexible i like to talk about the wet sand at the beach i don't know if you have ever uh, played around with the wet sand but you get it and as you start like squishing it up your hand and starts falling in it starts creating this sort of you know castle shape you know like this uh, uh, of, of wet sand but uh, the truth is as you are releasing it you're not really controlling it it's just allowing the wind and gravity and it's random place and to sort of take shape of it. So when you design, be flexible. Don't be so rigid. Don't be so controlling of your design. There'll be a, a moment where you'll get to that, but in the design process, you just be like the wet sand, just draw, just flow, just be very fluid and be very flexible. This, if you're not extreme, remember this is an exploring moment. You need to explore ideas. If you have these preconceived notions of this is how a house should be, this is how a library is going to be, I saw this image, is going to really limit and hinder your design process. So be very fluid. Last thing, or not last thing, number six, shift in viewpoints. Remember, you're designing in 2D, but you're also designing in 3D. So what does this mean? Think about floor plan, but also think of an elevation. Think of the facade. Think of a, a 3D view. Think about how the light comes in. Think about, you know, different look things and just simply be constantly turning around your, your, your design and to different perspectives will uh, really change your, your mind. Change the scale. When we talked about change the scale, is I just simply saying start broad and then turn and then get very specific. So draw the whole building but then focus just on the facade, right? Focus just in one room. So eventually you're gonna start very big with the big scale 
and then you're gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller. Last thing, step back and communicate with others and enjoy the process. Sometimes we get so close to things that we can, you know, lose sight and, and just become super stressful. So take a, take a break, go watch a movie, do something, take a step back, or also talk to others, talk to your team members if you're working, talk to your classmates if you're in class, talk to your friend, talk to the client, just communicate with others and, and say, this is what I've had so far, what do you think? This is a very important thing that I constantly do when I'm designing, especially with other architects or other people who are in the architecture field. And the last thing, please enjoy the process. I know it sounds a little bit stressful getting a blank sheet and knowing that eventually it's going to become an actual thing, but that's the fun part of this. That's the exploring process. That's the, the, the process that's, gonna, um, that's really gonna be um, a fun thing to do. And when you get a new project, it'll start all over. And if you don't enjoy the process, uh, it can get stressful. And, and so architecture at times, you know, it could be stressful as any other job, but enjoy it, have fun with it. Uh, this is some sketches and I'll, I'll end with this. There's some sketches, uh, Arch Daily asked uh, some architects, they said, how does your design process look in your office? And so there was these three sketches. Number one, it was, uh, I can just imagine, I remember I said it's non-linear, so I could sort of see all these ideas in his head, just simply trying to get into the computer and to finalize the ideas. And it's driving him in a way, um, you know, to be to pushing him out of his chair. The second one, I like also that it looks like a very small room, so maybe uh, students um, you feel more connected to this one. Uh, and so this one is like you'll, you'll have your, your laundry, and then you have your schoolwork, and you have the projects, and you have this, and also you're still reading. And so there's all these different things going on at the same time. And the last one I found a little bit funny just because uh, this person, she tagged a lot of different things. Here she puts like snack drawers, so she's drawing and she needs a snack break. Uh, how to tell time. Sometimes you'll be designing and you'll lose track of time. Uh, to view outdoors. It's always important as you're designing to have this uh, a good sense of space and a good sense of what's happening outdoor, not to be super just closed in and forget about the outside world. So again, enjoy this process, the design process. I'll talk about, I'll talk a little bit about more, I'll talk a little bit more about this in part two. So please go and watch the second part. Thank you.